Hey guys, it's Jimmy from over at Movie Death Blows. Hope everyone's doing well out there tonight. I know I am. Uh, I had a bunch of screenings coming up in the future. I have Black Widow next week, which is on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, I did get a chance to look at Netflix Fear Street, but I didn't get a chance to, to get anything out on it. Uh, this week I also saw The Tomorrow War, starring Chris Pratt. It's on Amazon, it's on Amazon Prime. It should come out today. You should guys be able to watch it now. Uh, but, you know, I have a seventh-month-old, so these reviews don't always come out on time. So let's jump into The Tomorrow War. Uh, it's directed by Chris McKay. You guys might be familiar with He directed uh, the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie, and he's a producer on all that Lego stuff. He's also uh, attached to direct Nightwing, the DC comic for Warner Brothers, and I think he's attached to the Johnny Quest movie as a director, but I don't think that movie's ever going to happen. So pretty much this movie stars Chris Pratt as Dan Forrester. He's a former Green Beret. That's like he wants a prestigious job at this research facility and he doesn't get it, so then he ends up becoming like a science teacher at a random high school or something like that. So it takes place during 2022, which would be next year, obviously. And it starts out, they're all watching like the World Cup and it's Brazil against somebody else. And, like they're running down the field on a breakaway and all of a sudden all these soldiers from the future just show up to like a wormhole, kind of like Terminator, and tell them that they're from the year 2051. And they're here to warn humanity that they're on the brink of extinction due to these alien invaders called the White Spikes. I'll get into them later. Uh, in response, the, uh, you know, the governments of the world send in, you know, their, the soldiers that they have, but they're getting, like, slaughtered out there. I think fewer than, than I think, 20% of them survive or something like that. Like, everyone just gets slaughtered by these White Spike things. And they're pretty vicious aliens when you come to see them. You know, these aren't, like, uh... If I were, if I were to... T if I were to compare them to something, they're like a combination of the arachnids from Starship Troopers, the aliens from Alien, and probably like those dog-looking things you saw in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Like, they're real fast, they're real big, they come at you, and they are hard to kill. <laughs> so after a year, they have like a big draft, and uh, Dan's character, Chris Pratt's character, Dan Forrester, ends up getting drafted. And they kind of just like throw, it's like there's, it's like they send him for basic training, but basic training is like, oh yeah, here, here's a gun, and you're going to go kill these things, and you're going on missions. So I mean, Chris Pratt stars in this, I said that, Betty Gilpin stars in it from uh, Glow, she played Lady Liberty, I think. Uh, Sam Richardson from Veep is somehow like one of the best parts of the movie. He played, uh, uh, I forget who he played in Veep, what was his name? Uh, give me one sec, let me find it. Richard Splett, I think, was his name. Yeah, he was the black guy. But he's, he's great in this movie. He kind of plays like the same kind of character, like doesn't really know what's going on, but somehow everything he says works. Uh, J.K. Simmons plays Chris Pratt's father. He's like an anti-government former Vietnam vet that's like hiding out in an airport hangar somewhere. And J.K. Simmons is jacked in this movie. Like, this isn't Whiplash J.K. Simmons. This J.K. Simmons will mess your day up even more than Whiplash J.K. Simmons. And a young... The chick from... Uh, Handmaid's Tale and Dexter, I can't even pronounce her last name, Jan Straholsky or something. She plays Muri Forrester, who's Chris Pratt's daughter, but she plays her in the future. So, like, he gets sent 30 years into the future. from. So they go, like, from 2022 to 2051. They get sent via, like, this wormhole to the future, and they all just land there. But, you know, obviously, this is kind of, they, have, they have, like, a World War II kind of drop where they don't land where they're supposed to land. And everyone they jump with ends up falling in a pool or dying or something like that. It's It's crazy. Like, it's... It's pretty much shitty Terminator, but it's it's entertaining shitty Terminator because they've done things people haven't done in the past with time travel movies and stuff like that. Like, they don't really go into the technology that's used to, to send them to the future or send them back. Like, they have a certain amount of time they have to be there for. Like, I think it's seven days or something like that. They don't really, they're not really clear on what it is. So basically, they send them to the future to battle the White Spikes. And the first time you see these White Spikes, you're like, oh, okay, these are... They look like they're, they're, they're white, obviously. They kind of look like abominable snowmen. But like I said, they're quick, they're fast, they're vicious. They shoot, like, spikes out of their talons that can incapac incapacitate you, take you out. Uh, they're, they're no joke. They're not to be messed with. Just, you know, picture if the arachnids from Starship Troopers could, like, fire stuff out. That's well, I mean, some of them could, but, like, the soldier ones, the warrior ones. So... That's pretty much what the movie's about, and you know they go on to battle the whites, the white spikes, and they figure out, you know, there was an alien ship that crashed here. I'm not ruining for you guys, just watch it. But I mean, it's it's much better than I thought it was going to be. 
you know, obviously it's on Prime Video and they don't really have that many great movies that, you know, are coming out on Prime and Netflix these days. You have the original ones. This was supposed to be made for theater, so you can tell it had a little bit of uh, money behind it. But it's a decent movie. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Chris Pratt's always solid in these kind of roles. I mean, he's been doing that since he started in Zero Dark Thirty, randomly as that Navy SEAL. Uh, every time... <laughs> Every time I see him in this kind of role, I think back to that scene from Jurassic World where she's like, can't you just track him? He's like, I was with the Navy, not the Navajo. But uh, I would I would definitely recommend this, probably give it for me. I mean, I know it's got a, it's Rotten Tomatoes rating is probably like 58 to 60, something like that. I'd probably get a 60 for me, it's 60% rating, so three out of five for me, two and a half out of five. It's entertaining, it's going to hold your interest. The aliens are the best part. I mean, the monsters, whatever, the white spikes, whatever you want to call them, they are aliens. Like, you'll see these things in action. They are they are not to be trifled with. And J.K. Simmons is... It looks like... So he has the same kind of get-up. Like, if you've ever seen those... Uh, when he was trying, when he was going to be Commissioner Gordon, they had, like, those workout videos where he's just jacked with this huge beard. That's what it's like. The end gets kind of crazy, but, I mean, you'll see what I'm talking about when you watch it. It does have a little dose of a uh, live-die-repeat... That t starred uh, Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. I call it that. I know that's not the actual... like. It, so the actual name was Live, Die, Repeat, or Edge of Tomorrow. That's kind of what it's like, except you're not in like a Groundhog's Day situation where you're just reliving the same thing over and over again. Like, you're in the future, there's an alien war, but you're in the same time trying to figure it out, pretty much. And then, like, he finds out from his daughter that, uh, you know... They, they tell him before he goes back in time, they're like, well, you die in seven years. So, like, we know you don't exist in the future... So we can send you there. They, him and uh, him and Chris Pratt and uh, Sam Richardson have a conversation. The movie like, well, you know, they told me I was dead in seven years, so maybe they can't send me to the future if I'm alive. So because I can't interact with myself, there's not a paradox. None of these movies ever go into like paradox situations, or that you know you can't really travel backwards in time. You can travel forwards in time, but it's it's complicated. They don't. It's it's not worth getting into. They're not going to be like Avengers Endgame. We're talking about you know. She's telling me uh, Back to the Future is a bunch of bullshit, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, also, Edwin Hodge is in it. He's from uh, the, the Purge movies. He's Aldous Hodge's older brother, if you know Aldous Hodge. He plays in uh, City on a Hill on Showtime. He's going to be Hawkman in Black Adam. He's pretty good. He was in Straight Outta Compton, too. I believe he played uh, MC Wren. Let me just double check that. Yeah, yeah, that's who it is. But, I mean, overall, The Tomorrow War is a solid movie. It's something you're going to watch to entertain yourself. You're never going to go back and be like, oh, i got to watch The Tomorrow War again. Like, if it's on, you're definitely going to stay tuned just because, you know, it's a fun movie for everybody. It's not going to win any awards or anything like that. It's a sci-fi movie. It's awesome. All sci-fi movies can't be that terrible. They're all entertaining in some way. This is the same way. Chris Pratt really does well in these kind of roles. Uh, Betty Gilpin wasn't really used. I mean, I love her in everything, especially in Glow, and she was great in that weird movie that got delayed i forget what it was called where she killed all those people with hillary swank but sam richardson's the mvp of this movie the aliens are jk simmons is just kind of there like he's an academy award winner but he doesn't really have much to do he's in a couple scenes overall i like i said i give the tomorrow war about two and a half three stars i recommend you guys go see it uh like i said i will have more more screenings coming up in the future i know fear street i'm gonna get a couple looks at Black Widow, I know I'm definitely going to see next Wednesday. Hoping to get a review out before it comes up, before everybody can see it on Thursday on Disney Plus and in the theaters. Uh, you know, the embargo is not... The embargo is, uh, it's already up this week. They already showed it for critics out in L.A. and stuff like that. So I hope to have something up for you guys then. Uh, like, subscribe, follow the page. Hope you guys tune in. Thanks.